We begin with the St. Louis and or Los Angeles Rams. It was 20 years ago Saturday that the long-suffering employees of Violet Francis, Georgia, Irwin, Anonymous, Geiger, Johnson, Hayes, Weiler, Rosenblum, Frontieri, that was her name, announced they were moving her team, the Rams, to St. Louis. And in the great traditions of the Rams and Los Angeles and St. Louis football, the occasion will be marked by heightened talk that the Rams will shortly move back from St. Louis to Los Angeles just because the guy who now owns them has a large stake in a brand new football stadium, yet another brand new football stadium that's going to be built near the airport. And yes, you're right. If all the brand new football stadiums announced for Southern California had actually been built, there wouldn't be room for anything else except the Shea J restaurant in Santa Monica. At the outset, it is imperative to remember the great truth of stadium construction, especially when they involve public funds and broad promises of reviving downtown or funding schools or creating jobs. A dozen complex mathematical formulas can prove to you that this is hogwash. But as a noted economist once told me, it doesn't have to be that complicated. If building stadiums really made cities any money, the owners would build the stadiums entirely by themselves and keep all the money. That's their job. That's what they do. So the idea of a new stadium in St. Louis or one near the airport in L.A. or for that matter, one in the airport in L.A. is a boondoggle. It's a ripoff. It's grabbing the taxpayers by the legs and shaking them until their wallets and their fillings fall out. This is underscored by the fact that even the city of St. Louis acknowledges that the dome built to lure the Rams from L.A. 20 years ago this weekend still isn't paid for. That the amount of public bonds still being used to pay down the place is a staggering $350 million. Sure, build them another one and continue the traveling circus that is the Rams and football in St. Louis and all pro sports in L.A. As it is true that if the Rams move back to L.A., nobody will be surprised, so was it true that when they moved to St. Louis, nobody was surprised. Months before, a source had told me that a friend of his was in charge of whining and dining, Rams owner Georgia Frontieri, and nobody liked to be wined and dined quite like Mrs. Frontieri did, at least judging by her seven husbands and the boyfriend named Earl, who was scheduled to become husband number eight, but something happened to say nothing of frozen shoulder quarterback Burt Jones, whom she supposedly signed because she liked how he looked taking the snap. Anyway, the friend was boasting about how the deal was sealed when it was made clear to Mrs. Frontieri that she would take home $60 million if she moved. Not the club, just her. This just to convince her to move to the city of her birth, where her mom had been Miss St. Louis of 1926 and was the leader of and accordion player for the nation's first all-girl orchestra, Lucia Pamela and her band of musical pirates. This repeating theme of the Rams are moving, no doubt performed for us by Lucia Pamela and her band of musical pirates, dates back to 1937. They were the Cleveland Rams of the third American Football League. The one you know about from the 60s was the fourth American Football League. The Cleveland Rams moved from the AFL to the NFL in 1937, and then they moved to Los Angeles in 1946, and then the owner, Bob Ursay, moved them, traded them straight up for the Colts in 1972, and then they moved to Anaheim in 1980, and then Georgia Rosenblum tried to move them to Baltimore in 1993. And then finally she did move them to St. Louis 20 years ago Saturday. St. Louis, of course, had already had an NFL team move in and out. The Cardinals, who blew in from Chicago in 1960, but who by 1985 were being shopped around to Baltimore and Jacksonville and Phoenix, which is where, of course, they moved in 1988. Which brings us back to how the Rams might wind up moving to Los Angeles again. L.A. is the revolving door of sports franchises. Almost nothing is original to the community. The L.A. Dodgers are, of course, from Brooklyn. The L.A. Lakers from Minneapolis. The L.A. Clippers from San Diego before that Buffalo. The L.A. Rams from Cleveland. The L.A. Raiders moved in from Oakland and then moved right back out. And the teams that actually started in L.A. pretty much either vanished. The football L.A. Dons, the hockey L.A. Sharks, 206 different soccer teams. Or they moved away, the L.A. Chargers, the L.A. Angels, the basketball L.A. Stars. Basically, the only L.A.-born L.A. team is the Kings. And while this seems to symbolize the cliché of Los Angeles City, of transient angels, anybody actually from here? No? Anybody actually got a screenplay at Paramount? What, all of you? In reality, this goes back a full century. Los Angeles had two minor league baseball teams, the L.A. Angels and the Vernon Tigers. And the Vernon Tigers played in the little town of Vernon because early in the 20th century, there were only two municipalities in Southern California where you could legally sell alcohol. And one of them was Vernon. In 1913, the Vernon Tigers moved 
to the other municipality where you could legally sell alcohol, Venice, California. And 100 years ago this summer, they moved back to Vernon. And then in 1926, they moved to San Francisco. Well, that left a void in L.A., so somebody bought the Salt Lake City team and moved it and called them the Hollywood Stars. And obviously, they later moved away to San Diego, too, because the L.A. ballpark owners raised the rent, which meant there was yet another void which was solved when somebody bought the old Vernon team that had moved to Venice and then back to Vernon and then to San Francisco. They bought it back to L.A. as the new Hollywood Stars. And, of course, 20 years later, they and the L.A. Angels had to move out when? Then, naturally, the Dodgers moved in. Got all that? Good. Because basically what it means is, yes, Saturday is the 20th anniversary of an L.A. team moving out. But actually, almost any day on the calendar is some kind of an anniversary of an L.A. team moving out. Or in. Or both.